Hi everyone, let's start with our new lesson on two sample tests of hypothesis. In the previous chapter, we have learned about one sample test of hypothesis. In the case of one sample test, we will only have one population and we will select our sample randomly from this population. Then we want to test whether our sample is representative of our population or otherwise. Two sample tests is just the extensions of what we have learned before. In the case of two sample tests, we will have two different or two independent population. For instance, population A and population B. And we want to know whether these two population have the same mean or do not have the same mean. Therefore, we will select our sample, for instance, sample A randomly and we will select sample B randomly to test our hypothesis okay this is the overview of this chapter the first one we will learn about independent sample and the second one we will learn about dependent sample for independent sample it means that the sample is actually independent to each other while for the dependent sample it means that the sample is related to each other Okay, so under independent sample, we will compare two population mean. In this case, we will be using Z statistics and T statistics. While for the dependent sample, we will be using T statistics only. There are four learning objectives in this chapter. The first one is that you should be able to test a hypothesis that two independent population mean are equal assuming that the population standard deviations are known as well as unknown. Then, you should be able to test a hypothesis about the population difference between paired or dependent observation. And the last one, you should be able to explain the difference between dependent and independent sample tests. Okay? Two sample tests of hypothesis is actually comparing two population mean. So, if you want to compare two different population, for instance, we talk about plumber and electrician, we want to know whether their mean are actually equal. In other words, we want to know whether the distributions of the difference between the mean could have a means of zero. So, a means of zero means that the means is equal. If, let's say, you got the mean, is not zero it means that the means are different so when you talk about two population basically you are talking about two things if you look at the example we talk about the male as well as female the second example we talk about the production rates after the music and the production rate before the music so you have to have two things when you talk about two population mean Okay. In comparing two population mean, we can use Z or T distribution. We will use Z when our sigma is known, while we will use T when the sigma is unknown. Okay. There are a few conditions or requirements that we have to fulfill if you want to use Z distribution. The first requirement is that the two population should follow normal distribution. Second, the sample should be coming from independent or different or unrelated population. For instance, we talk about the populations of male and female. Or perhaps we want to talk about the populations of plumber and electrician. So these two populations should be unrelated or different from each other. The third requirement, the population standard deviation should be known or we call it sigma. Okay, so this is the formula to compute two sample tests of mean when our sigma is known. So Z equals to X bar 1 minus X bar 2. X bar 1 is the mean for sample 1. While X bar 2 is the mean for sample 2. Divided with square root of sigma squared. 1. So, sigma squared is variance. So, this actually the variance for sample 1. And sigma squared 2 is the variance for 
sample 2 divided with n1 so n1 here is the number for sample 1 and n2 is the number for sample 2 okay this is the examples of comparing two population mean using Z statistics. Customers at the food town supermarkets have a choice when paying for their groceries. So they may check out and pay using the standard cashier assisted checkout or they may use the new fast lane procedures known as safe checkout. The store manager would like to know if the mean checkout time using the standard checkout method is longer than using the fast lane. Okay, if you are given a hypothesis question, you have to consider a few things. The first one, you have to know whether it is one sample or two sample tests. Okay, if we talk about one sample, basically we focus on one thing. If we talk about two sample, we are talking about two things. In this case, we are talking about the standard cashier assisted checkout and the fast lane procedures. So there are two things here, right? Okay, so basically we are talking about two sample tests. Second, you have to know whether we are talking about one tail test or two tail tests. Okay, how do you know that? We have to have the keywords. If you look at the question, there are many things here. The standard checkout method is longer than using the fast lane. Okay, so the keyword is longer. Or we can also say larger or bigger. So longer is an indication of one tail test. Okay, now you can answer the question. You have to start with step number one. So in step number one, you have to state the hash null and hash A. And you know that you always have to start with hash one. Your hash one is... So you have to read the question. The store manager would like to know if the mean, so we are talking about the mean checkout time using the standard checkout method is longer. So how to write your hash one? The means of the standard checkout is larger or longer than the means of the fast lane. Okay, the second hash null. So hash null is just the opposite signs of your hash one and contain the equal sign since our hash one is larger so hash now should be smaller and equal okay second step you have to write the level of significance which is your alpha and alpha will always be given in the question in this case we are using 0 0.01 step number three we have to compute the test statistics so in this example we are using z statistics so all the information to compute our Z statistic will be given in the next slide, okay? Before computing your Z statistics, you have to know why do you have to use it. So if you look at the yellow box, the population standard deviations or your sigma is given. If let's say the sigma is not given, you cannot use Z statistics. You have to use T statistics. So this yellow box gives you the information of customer's type you have standard method and fast lane. So standard method is your first sample, fast lane is your second sample. You are also given the sample mean. You have x bar 1 and x bar 2. And you also have sigma 1 and sigma 2. And the sample size are also given n1 and n2. Given all this information, you should be able to compute your z statistics by plugging in all this information into the Z formula and that will give you the value of 3.123 okay step number four you have to formulate the decision rule so before formulating your decision rule you have to compute your CV or critical value okay so the steps to compute your CV you have to refer to T table and then you have to select one tail test then you have to look at the alpha equals to 0 0.01 and then go to infinity. Why do we have to go to infinity? Because we are talking about Z statistics. So we assume that we are dealing with such a very large number. That's why you have to refer to infinity. And this step will give you the value of your CV equals to 
2.326. Okay. Then, you can formulate your decision rule. You should say, reject hash null if your test statistic here is Z. If let's say your test statistics later on is T statistics, you can just put T. Okay. Then, bigger. How do you know that this is bigger? So, this sign will follow the sign of your hash 1. And this value, 2.326, is your CV value. Okay. Next, you have to draw your diagram. Okay. So, you have to put your CV, 2.326, on your right side because it has a positive value. And this CV is called as your rejection region. Okay, step number five, you have to make the decision whether you want to reject or do not reject your hash null. Okay, how do you want to make a decision? You have to plot your Z statistics. So, Z statistics equals to 3.123. So, when you want to plot it inside your diagram, so perhaps it is somewhere here. This is your Z statistics. So, how do you want to make your decision? You can say reject the hash null because your Z value is inside the rejection region. Step number six, you have to interpret your result. Okay, so since you reject your hash null, right? So, let me write it here. So, your hash null and hash one. Hash one is the means of the standard method is bigger than the means of false length. And hash null, the means of standard, smaller at equals with the means of false length. Since you reject your hash null, what, what can you say? You can say the means of standard method take larger time compared to the means of false length. Or in other words, we can conclude that the false length method is faster. Okay. So that's the end of the steps in hypothesis testing. You have six steps. So for those who want to use p-value, okay, because as I mentioned before, CV and PV can be used simultaneously or alternately. alternately. Okay, if you want to use PV, perhaps I can write it here. Okay. You have to refer to your Z value. In this case, your Z value is equals to 3.123. And round it up, become two decimal points, you get 3.12. And then you can refer to Z table. Then you cannot find the value right because the largest value let me write it here the largest value in the table is 3.09 and that will give you the value of 0 0.4990 okay so if you want to draw the diagram for the pv perhaps i can draw it here okay so in the middle is zero. So your PV is here, but the value that you get here, which is 0 0.4990 is here. This is your 0 0.4990. So, but this shaded area is your PV. How to find your PV? It's easy, right? So you have to take 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4990. And this will give you the value of 0 0.001. Okay. So you have to compare your PV with your alpha. Okay. So let me put it here. This is your PV. And your alpha is equals to point what? Point zero 0.01. Okay. So if you compare this, your PV is actually smaller than your alpha. Then your decision is reject the hash null. Okay? You can also compare two population mean using T statistics when your sigma is unknown. And three requirements to use these test statistics are actually similar with the requirement for Z statistics. Okay?
If you want to compute your T statistics, you have to use two formula. So let's look at the formula to compute your T. T equals to X bar 1 minus X bar 2. X bar 1 is just the mean for your first sample. And X bar 2 is the mean for your second sample. Divided with square root of S squared P. So S is your sample standard deviation. And when you have squared, you will read it as sample variance. And then you have this small p, which is pool. And when we combine all these three, we will read it as pool variance. And then you multiply with 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. n1 is just the number for the first sample. n2 is just the number for the second sample. Okay, if you notice here, your pool variance has its own formula. So this is the formula for your pool variance. So what is pool in the first place? When you talk about carpool, means that you put everyone in the car, right? And when we talk about pool, means that we combine everything in one time or one formula. So let's look at the formula. Pool variance equals to N1 minus 1. So n is just the number for sample 1, you minus 1, and multiply with variance for sample 1 plus n2 minus 1 multiply with variance in second sample divided with n1 plus n2 minus 2. Okay, for your information, n1 plus n2 minus 2 is called as degree of freedom for the case of 2 sample in these statistics okay let's look at the examples of two sample pool tests Owen incorporation manufacture lawn mowers that are shipped to dealers throughout the US and Canada two different procedures have been proposed for mounting the engines of lawn mowers that are Wellers method and Atkins method the question is is there a difference in the methods mean time to mount the engines of lawn mowers as I mentioned previously, if you want to answer hypothesis question, you have to consider a few things. The first one, you have to consider whether you are talking about one sample or two sample tests. Okay, whether you are talking about one thing or two things. In this case, we are comparing two different procedures that are Wallace method and Atkins method. So here, we are using two sample tests. Second, you have to consider whether you are talking about one tail or two tail tests. Okay, how do you know whether you have to use one tail or two tail tests? So you have to find the keywords. The keywords is difference. Difference means not equals. So basically, we are referring, we are focusing on two tail. Okay. And the last one, number three, you also have to consider whether you want to use Z-test or T-test. Okay, so in this case, if you look at this yellow box, you are given the samples for two methods, which is Wellers and Atkins. So under Wellers, you have your observation equals to 5, and under Atkins method, your observation is equals to 6. Basically, the sigma or population standard deviations are not given because if you are given the sample, so you can compute the sample standard deviation, not the population standard deviation. Okay, now after answering all these three points, you can start writing your hypothesis steps. So, step number one you have to start the H0 and H1. You know that you have to start with your H1. So how to write your H1? You can say the mean for Wallace is different or not equal with the means of Atkins because we want to compare between these two methods. And your H0 is just the opposite signs of your H1. Since our H1 is not equal, so our H0 should be equal. Step number two, you have to select your alpha. In this case, we are using Point 10. Step number 3, you have to determine or you have to compute your test statistics because we don't know about our sigma, so we have to use 
the statistics okay there are a few steps if you want to compute the t statistics the first one is that you have to compute the sample mean so how to compute the sample mean you have to sum all the observation and divide with the total number and you have to do it for both method which is wellers and atkins second steps you have to compute the sample standard deviation and you have to do it for both method the third steps you have to compute the pool variance the four steps after having all these three information then you can compute your t statistics and for your information we will discuss the calculation in detail for step number three and four in the next slide okay so here your t value is equals to negative 0.662 step number four we have to formulate the decision rule you know that in the previous lecture i mentioned if you want to formulate your decision rule you have to compute the cv so what are the steps to compute your cv you have to refer to t table and then you have to select two tail test and then your alpha is equals to 0.10 and your degree of freedoms the formula is n1 plus n2 minus 2 and in this case our n1 is 5 plus 6 minus 2 so you should get the value of 9 and given all these steps your cv will be equals to 1.833 okay so our cv will have two values positive and negative values because we are talking about two tail tests next we have to draw our diagram so you will see that your cv which is negative 1.833 is on the left side of the diagram as well as it will be on the right side of our diagram so this shaded area is called as rejection region now we can formulate the decision rule so we can say reject h null if the t value is less than negative 1.833 or bigger than 1.833 because these two area means that it is under the rejection region okay next you can also set that in a different way you can say do not reject hash null if t fall between negative 1.833 and 1.833 so it refers to this area okay step number five we have to make a decision so how to make a decision we have to compare our cv with the t value so our t value is equals to negative 0.622 and you have to plot it inside the diagram so our t value should be somewhere here okay now we can say that do not reject the hash null because the t value is outside the rejection region this is the working to compute the pool variance we have the number for wellers which is 5 minus 1 multiply with the standard deviation for wellers and then we put squared into it plus the number for atkins which is 6 minus 1 multiply with the sample standard deviation for atkins squared over the number for wellers which is 5 plus 6 minus 2 and this will give us the answer of 6.2 something okay then we have to take the pool variance answer and plug in into the formula of t and this will give us the value of negative 0.662 okay so based on our previous result we said that our decision is we cannot reject the hash null so step number six we have to interpret our result so we can conclude that we fail to show that there is a difference between the mean assembly time of the two methods or in other words we can say that we fail to show that or to prove that our hash one or our hypothesis 
is true. Okay? We will not cover this slide, so you can simply ignore this part. You can ignore this as well. And this one. Please ignore it. Okay? We have discussed the independent sample where the two samples are different from each other. For instance, we talk about female and male. They are different from each other. Now, we will talk about the dependent sample. It means that the two samples are very related or very similar to each other. So, dependent samples is also called as PET t-test. Let's look at the formula for PET t-test. T equals to d bar over SD divided with square root of n. So d is actually different. Bar is mean. So we can say this is the mean difference. SD is the standard deviation for the difference. Okay. This is the formula to compute standard deviations of the difference. It is equals to square root of summations of d minus d bar squared over n minus 1. So d here is the difference, while d bar is the mean difference. If you look at this formula, it is very similar to our normal standard deviation. We have square root of summations of x minus x bar squared over n minus 1. The difference between these two formula are, previously our observation is x, now our observation is d, and previously we talk about the means of the x. Now we talk about the means of the d. The remainings of the items are the same. So let's look at the example for dependent sample. Nickel Savings employs two firms, Shadak and Boyer, to appraise or to evaluate the value of the real estates. To review the consistency of these two firms, Nichols randomly select 10 homes and has both of the firm to appraise or to evaluate the value of the selected home. So, there will be a pairs of values for each home and these values are related to each other. Basically, these two firms will evaluate the same 10 homes. So, these two values, for instance, company A and company B will evaluate the same house. So their value will be very related to each other because they are talking or they are evaluating the same house. So we call it dependent sample or pet sample. We will use the examples of nickel saving that selected a sample of 10 residential properties and asked both firm for an appraisal. The results are reported in thousands of dollars in the yellow box. At the 0 0.05 significance level, can we conclude that there is a difference between the firm appraised values? So based on this question, we have three important points. The first one is that we are talking about two samples tests. How do we know this? Because we are referring to two firms, Shadex and Boyer. So how can you differentiate between independent and dependent sample? For independent sample, the two firms will be unrelated or different from each other. For instance, we are talking about different firms that look at different things. Perhaps the first firm will look at apple, while the second firm will look at orange. Okay. For the dependent sample, the two firms are looking at the same thing. In this case, these two firms are evaluating the same house. For instance, this first house, okay, so their values or the valuations are very related to each other. Second, we are talking about two tell tests. Okay, so the keywords here is difference or not equals. So in this case, we know that we are talking about two tell tests. Third point. We are using T statistics. How do we know this? Because if you look at the yellow box, these 10 homes are the sample or the selected house. So if we are dealing with the sample, we will never know the sigma or population standard deviation. Therefore, we have to use T statistics. Now, 
we can start with our hypothesis testing step. Step number one, we should state the null and alternate hypothesis. So our H1 is that the mean difference of these two firms are not equal to zero. Or we can say it is different from zero. While the H null should be the opposite signs of our H1, which is the mean difference is equal to zero. Okay. So some of you may find it hard to use or to write your hypothesis testing in the statistical form. You can also choose to write it in word form. So how to write it? So let me write it here. H null is there is a difference between the firm's appraised value. These words or this question can be your H1. So how to write your H null? You can say there is no difference between the firm's appraised value. That could be your H null. Step number two. We can select the level of significance or alpha. In this case, it is equals to 0 0.05. Step number three, we have to compute the test statistic. Here, we are using T statistic. I will discuss on how to find the T statistic in detail in the next slide. Just assume that we have computed it and we got the answer of 3.305. Okay, step number four. We have to formulate the decision rule. And you know that you have to compute your CV. So let me write it here. CV, you have a few steps, right? So you have to refer to T table. And then your degree of freedom is N minus 1, which is 10 minus 1, you will get 9. And then two tail tests. Alpha is equals to 0 0.05 and this will give you the value of 2.262. Okay, because we are talking about two tail tests, so your CV will have two values, which is positive and negative. So let me draw a diagram so that it is easy for everyone to see it. Okay, so you have here negative 2.0. 262 and positive 2.262 so this shaded area is your rejection region okay so here if you want to formulate your decision rule you should say reject hash null if let's say your t value is less than negative 2.262 or your cv or your T value is bigger than 2.262. Okay, because these two value or two area is under the rejection region. Now, what is your T value? T value is 3.305, which is perhaps somewhere here. So this is your T value. So what can you conclude? What can you say about it? Basically, you have to reject the hash null because your T value fall under the rejection region. These are just the working to compute the T statistics. Let's look at this yellow box. The first column is just the 10 homes. Second and the third columns are evaluation given by each of the firms. The next columns are the difference of the valuation given by the firms. So how to compute the difference or the D? So it is very easy. You just take the value of the first firm, which is 235, minus the value of the second firm, which is 228. And then you will get the difference of 7. If you want to compute the mean difference, you just have to take the summations of all these difference divided with the total number of home, which is 10. And you will get the value of 4.60, or we call it D bar. Okay. So you can also compute the standard deviations of the difference by computing using square root of summations of d minus d bar squared over n minus 1. So how to compute it? So you have to take the first d, the first observation, which is 7 minus d bar 
4.6 and then you put squared plus the second observation which is 5 minus 4.6 squared plus the, the third observation and so on. And then later on you divide it with n. What is our n? 10 minus 1 and then put square root. You should get the value of 4.6. 402. Okay, given all this information, you just plug in into the formula of t, you should get the value of our t equals to 3.305. Okay, now step number five, you have to make your decision. You know that we have to reject our null hypothesis or hash null. So step number six, we have to interpret it. When we reject the hash null, we can say that there is a difference between the firm's mean appraised home value. Or in other words, when we reject our hash null, we can say our hash one or our own hypothesis is true. Okay? Dependence and independent sample. This is just like the conclusions of this chapter. There are two types of dependent sample. The first type, we call it as pet sample. The second type, we call it intervention sample so the pet sample we have learned it just now we have one thing for instance home and this home is evaluated by two firm firm a and firm b so the evaluation given by firm a and firm b are related to each other because these two firms are evaluating just one item okay for intervention for instance we have one thing here or one value but because of intervention here, we have another new value. So we also call it before and after study. So before this, the value is this much, perhaps 10. But because of this intervention, the value has changed from 10, perhaps become 20. Okay, so let's look at the examples of this intervention. For instance, suppose we wish to show that by playing music in the production area, we are able to increase production output. We begin by selecting a samples of workers and measure the output. Then we place the speaker because we believe that the music can improve their production. And we place the speaker in the production area and play soothing music. And then we again measure the output. So in this case, they believe that if let's say they play music so the production of the worker will increase so we can say that before means that nothing has changed there is no intervention so before the music was played so this is the values and then they put the music in the middle and after the music they measure the production so before the music and after the music, they want to see whether there is an increase in terms of the output or the production. Okay, so in this case, before and after result will be related because they are talking about the same sample. Okay, when they want to measure the worker, they are talking about the same worker before and after the worker being exposed to the music. Okay, so... Next, we prefer a test based on dependent sample because it reduces the amounts of variation in the test and it is considered as the, be the better test. Okay, why do we prefer the dependence compared to independent? Because independent are talking about different sample, but dependent, the sample are very related to each other. They are coming from the same sample, so that's why the variation given by dependent sample is smaller compared to the variation given by the independent sample. That's why we prefer the dependent sample. Okay? 